Hi everyone! For today's video, we have part 3 of the Pet Rescue video series. Where we left off in part 2, we had finished cleaning the machine and reseeding all the chips to make sure the computer was working properly. And in doing so, I found out that one of the RAM chips was bad. So let's get right to it! So here's how the motherboard sits at the moment. I have actually put heat sinks on all of the ROM chips and all of the RAM chips. I found that these chips get really hot uh, just in the normal operation. These are my favorite heat sinks. I get them from China. And they cost about three or four dollars for a 50 pack. So you really can't beat that price and they work great. You just double them up on chips that can take it. Now there's one blue chip over here and this is the video RAM, these two. And this is the bad chip. So if you recall from the last video, here is the bad character we have. This is caused by that video RAM chip, but the main memory appears to be working because we're getting the correct amount of RAM there. Thanks to viewers on my last video, they commented to let me know that the MPS6550, which is the custom static RAM, is still available from this seller on eBay. It's a UK seller called Little Diode Components, and the chips sell for five pounds each with free shipping, and you also get a discount when you buy extras. I placed my order for five of the chips and it actually came relatively quickly. It came well packed in an anti-static bag with a little piece of foam. And the chips definitely look like new old stock. If the date codes are anything to be believed, it's the 21st week of 1981. So these are pretty late compared to the chips that are in here, which are all around 1978. So perhaps Commodore was making these just as replacement parts for these early pets. And this was the last part of the run before they stopped. So after I ordered this RAM, I was chatting with Frank, one of my viewers, who's pretty much what I consider one of the world's pet experts. And he told me that Little Diode has been known to potentially sell fake chips and components before. And the people who had ordered and gotten fake parts had gotten their money back, so it wasn't a big deal. But he warned me that I should probably check the voltage pin to ground on these chips just to make sure when I put them into my pet it's not going to short the motherboard. So I printed out a pinout here of these MPS6550 chips. Pin 22 here is VSS, this is the ground pin, and we have VDD which is the 5 volt input. So I have the multimeter set up to measure ohms. Let's measure between pin 17 and pin 22 and let's just check to see what kind of resistance we're getting. 3.3K. So that's good. That's definitely not a short. If we switch to diode mode, we do the same thing. 0.9. Yep. So that's definitely not a short. Let's just check another one of these. 0.81 on this one. If we go back to ohms, 3.2K. For reference, let's test the bad chip on the motherboard. 2.4, diode drop, 0.7. So it's very similar. If anything, maybe these things use a little bit less power, hence the higher resistance. So I feel pretty safe to try one of these in the computer and see what happens. All right, so I'm just gonna pick this one right here. It's one of the ones we just tested. I'm gonna need to bend the pins down because these totally look like new old stock where the pins are splayed out. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's see if I can get this in here. New chip is in the socket with a notch facing towards me. It's on the right, and the old chip is right here. All right, let's turn this on and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. We have a working pet. So those new old stock chips absolutely work. We would have all of the screen covered in strange characters if half of the RAM weren't working right now. Thumbs up for Little Diode, thank you very much. It's neat that I have four additional chips as well, so I'll just bag these in the anti-static bag and probably keep them inside the pet here for safekeeping in case any further chips go bad. Here's the bad chip. It has an X on it already. It's, I did that last time when I during testing. It's from the 20th week of 1978. So this RAM chip goes in here with all these other bad chip. Now the RAM is sorted, it's time to move on to the keyboard. So if you recall from last time, I took apart the keyboard, cleaned it thoroughly, but we still had most of the keys not working. So someone suggested that I test a different keyboard 
on this machine just in case that perhaps there's nothing wrong with the keyboard and maybe one of the complex interface adapters, the CIAs, are causing an issue. So I happen to have another machine that we can use actually to test the keyboard on. I can either test that keyboard on this computer or I can test this keyboard on that computer. So this is my PET 4016. This is my second machine. It's got a pretty crapped out crusty label here which I really need to fix. This machine originally was 40 columns and 16K. You can see here I've modified it to be 80 columns and now has 32K. While the keyboards both would work on any type of PET, you do need to have the correct ROM to utilize the right keyboard. So because 80 column machines only ever came as professional business type keyboards, I have a custom modified ROM on this pet that allows me to use the graphic keyboard with an 80 column machine. Now the keyboard from the other pet, it's also the graphic keyboard. These keyboards are completely interchangeable. So I think I'm gonna start by plugging this one into this computer and seeing if it works any better. You gotta love the pet, look at this. You just pop the top on this pet. Kickstand is along the front edge. Well, the camera crashed again. Anyways, I don't know what footage I lost, but we have the keyboard from the other pet plugged into this one. Thing is closed and sort of propped up. Let's turn this on. Something is very strange on my pet. I'm able to type the K character, but I've got a bunch of garbage. This looks like a video RAM problem. This uses two one one fours for video RAM. And um, I've actually had issues before with the video RAM going bad. A red herring that it happened when I plugged the keyboard in, potentially. Let's take a quick look. So I unplugged the keyboard and it's still having all these weird glitchy issues. Now these are the video RAM chips. Originally when you have the 40 column machine, these chips aren't installed at all. There's just, they're blanks. There's no sockets or anything. So I've added this to upgrade this to 80 columns. And then this is one of the original MPS 2114 RAM chips, these are static RAMs, and this is one I've changed because it was bad on this machine. I'm going to start by just sort of reseeding these. I'm not sure which one has failed. That's caused the uh, funny glitchy characters. Okay, the pet is working again. So, <laughs> yeah, that was annoying. If you notice, I'm back to 40 columns. I, I converted this machine back to 40 columns. It's not hard to convert the machine between 40 columns and 80 columns. You do need the schematics. So it, these little jumper links here, it's not gonna be easy to see on the camera, but these little lines here tell you how to configure it for 40 or 80 columns. And on the motherboard, I've installed pin headers, so I just move the little wires back and forth. So what was the problem with the pet? With the weird characters? A bad 2114 SRAM chip, another bad. Now, interesting is I bought several of these I can't remember from which supplier. This was quite a while ago. These might have come from China, but I might have bought them locally too. I don't really remember. And this is not the first one to go bad. This machine originally had a bad SRAM chip for video memory. So I installed one of these into there. Well, I installed three because two of them are for the 80 columns and an additional one to replace the 40 column one that went bad. And this is now the second one of that batch that has gone bad. So when I converted this back to 40 columns, I just tried all three of the 214s that were socketed, and yes, this one is bad. So it goes into the dead parts bin. Uh, this one here still works. This was one of the other ones, and then I, there's one in the socket in the motherboard, and that's obviously working. But anytime this machine starts acting weird from a video perspective, I know I need to go straight for these 214s I bought and test them out. They don't get hot, but they seem to fail pretty quickly. Okay, and now back to testing this keyboard, the whole reason why I brought the PET 4016 down. Let's turn it back on. And let's see if this keyboard works now. All right, yes, everything looks good there. So, all right, yeah, same exact behavior as on the other PET. Just as I thought, most of the keys are not working. Actually, these are, and these were working before on the other one. K was working. So I know that the problem definitely is not my pet. The problem is this keyboard. It's just as I just as I imagined. This keyboard right here on this pet, when I got this, not a single key worked. I did my cleaning process, now it totally works. I, I noticed the S key was a little flaky, but the rest of the keys are still working. And I think I fixed this keyboard about a year ago. All right, so let me take this chiclet pet keyboard apart and do my same process that I did to this one to See if we can fix this. 
Okay, let's take the back of the keyboard off. I forgot that this uses flat heads, which are super annoying. All right, so my tactic for fixing these doesn't involve painting anything on, it involves sandpaper. And I have these little strips of 1500 grit sandpaper, and I will sand down each of these rubber contacts just lightly with this sandpaper. In the past, I've done this on the other two pets, Commodore 64s, completely rejuvenates the keyboard. Don't know for how long, but at least it works for a little while. Now, it might not be easy to see, but one of the issues is the little rubber pads are kind of shiny and once I sand them they won't have so much of a shine to them and the way you do it is you have to push the key so it raises it up and that will allow me to sand it so we're gonna just do a test with that one key and take the sandpaper fold it a little bit These plungers are a little bit different than the ones on the other pet. So that, that one sanding experiment didn't work out exactly as I had hoped, but this has worked in the past, so I'm gonna do it. Well, I finished sanding. Um, the sandpaper gets sort of clogged up with the rubber, so I had to keep cutting new strips. Okay, that's it for sanding. I'm just going to take some 51% IPA. Just give this a wipe down. Same thing for the keyboard. Just want all the pads to be nice and clean. Well, it's reassembled. Now the question is, will it work any better? Or maybe it'll be worse. Let's find out. Let's power on the computer. The moment of Truth. So, yep, clearly you can see I'm able to type. It's working a lot better. So let's go through all the keys. I have this little piece of paper here to write down the ones that aren't working well. So type it a few times, should be able to push lightly on it. Quote mark is not working well. If I push harder, it works, but lightly, light pushes don't work well on quote. So we're gonna write down quote, hash, dollar sign, sign. So far these are working fine. All right, this is the list of keys that are working, but you kind of have to push them a little bit harder. The rest work fine. So I'm just going to have to take the keyboard apart again and just focus on these keys with the sandpaper and hopefully that should fix those as well. All right, I'm going to end this video here. In part four, I'm finally gonna fix this keyboard and make it work properly. I'm going to service the cassette drive in the machine, and then I'm finally gonna reassemble the PET to have a nice, beautiful, working PET 2001. So I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. You can subscribe for more videos, and if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.